During the X-Men's mutant celebration known as the Hellfire Gala, a mysterious anti-mutant group known as Orcus launched a devastating attack against Marvel's mutants. In the subsequent months during the Fall of X story initiative, our mutants have been desperately trying to fight back against Orcus and exact their vengeance. My name is Arico Braddock and today, let's go ahead and preview the final issue of Fall of the House of X to see if our heroes can strike back against Nimrod. But before we get deeper into the video, I want to encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button over on this video. The battle for the future. It all comes down to this Orcus versus the X-Men winner take the future. Orcus has pushed mutant kind to their lowest point ever, but that just means the X-Men have had to fight back like never before. Will it be enough? We continue to barrel towards the conclusion of the Krakoan Age as these two stories that are one come to an end. Follow the House of X-5 is written by Jerry Duggan, featuring artwork from both Lucas Wernick and Stefano Caselli. We have colors from Brian Valenza, letters over from VCs Travis Lanham, and design from Tom Muller and Jay Bowen. In addition here, the cover for the series is still illustrated over from Pepe Larraz and Marte Gracia. Really fine, this cover does an excellent job showcasing the mutant's deadly battle against the machine known as Nimrod. Also, I want to extend a quick thank you over to Adventures in poor taste and detail some of these first story pages from Lucas Wernick. I really love the curvy line that Wernick is able to bring to so many of his illustrations and found that the page layout captured on this opening installment from Fall of the House of X-5 is really beautiful. I love how this comic book page also references the fact that so many of Orcus's human-based players are made irrelevant thanks to recent issues of Invincible Iron Man. Also in this context here, it's super interesting to watch the character of Fei Long still mourning Mars after all this time and his plight across both Invincible Iron Man and the X-Men suite of titles. Now that we're so far into the line of Krakoan comics, it's really interesting to see where some of these players end up in the final issues of the line here. A standout character in Follow the House of X-5 who I really thought had so much potential during the Krakoan Age is none other than Omega Sentinel. Her fight sequence with Rogue and the character of Psylocke really just opens up so many aspects of this character and just introduces Karima in a really different context than we've seen throughout the Krakoan Age of comics. I am very happy that Jerry Duggan was able to go to this length over with the character towards the end of this really climactic miniseries. There's also a moment later on in the scope of the comic book that references Omega Sentinel's new state of mind in a really interesting concept. I really hope that a From the Ashes X-Men writer will continue to flesh out that storyline. And we already mentioned that Duggan has been doing an excellent work juggling the larger supporting cast. There's such an interesting fight scene to complement Polaris and Magneto teaming up against Nimrod with both Sync and Emma Frost doing battle with him as well. Nimrod is able to fight against so many of Marvel's X-Men characters in different locations because he's able to switch between bodies. I think this plot thread really, really allows Jerry Duggan as an author to explore different pairs of X-Men characters as teams. This pays off so nicely when we see Sync manifesting his powers in a really interesting way, or when we get to see Polaris and Magneto dispatch their version of Nimrod with a really interesting collaboration of these two power sets. Finally, this issue was also able to do some excellent character work with Cyclops that we've seen throughout Fall of the House of X. This issue positions Cyclops in a slightly different position than we've seen him in previous installments during his battle with the villainous Nimrod character. I was such a big fan of the characterization that Duggan has written over for Cyclops, and I found that the mysterious character who collaborates with Scott over in this sequence is such a nice conclusion to this storyline and once again, a really interesting way to expand the X-Men franchise before the From the Ashes storyline kicks off over in earnest. Finally, 
I really wanted to mention the fact that Stefano Caselli takes over the last eight or so pages in the comic book. I think his contributions to uh, Follow the House of X issue five are so magnificent and do a surprisingly good job accommodating uh, some of Lucas Wernick's really, really curvy line. I think the facial expressions over from Stefano Caselli, particularly for Cyclops, are just so bold and brash and beautiful. And the final couple of story moments in ways that Stefano Caselli is able to leave off on Cyclops in a really wistful memory just really evokes so much interesting character relationships and insight for his characterization specifically. So at the end of the day here, I really think Follow the House of X issue 5 is a tremendous comic book. I think there is so much good characterization for our core team of X-Men heroes, extending from everybody like Cyclops over to Emma Frost. There's also so many just interesting callbacks to the Krakoan Age, whether it be references towards Omega Sentinel, Orcus, Dr. Stasis, or Fei Long. I'm just really happy at the way that Jerry Duggan has been able to expand his both Iron Man and X-Men franchises to build so much context and background over to Follow the House of X. In addition here, I'm so happy with where our art team left off in this final chapter. I think so much of Lucas Wernick's super curvy line just builds out a great sense of personality accommodated so well from Stefano Caselli's really tense character dynamics and facial interactions. I want to know from you, what were some of your thoughts over on Follow the House of X? Did you like this series as much as I did? And are you as excited as I am for the conclusion of the Krakoan storyline over in Rise of the Powers of Ten and future Marvel comics? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you one last time for coming to check out our video review over on Follow the House of X 5, and we'll be back to see how the Krakoan era winds down.